This video is about the second little miracle of linear algebra. The first one being the fact that for any matrix, the number of linearly independent columns, the column rank, always equals the number of linearly independent rows, the row rank. Now the second miracle is that for any matrix that has an inverse, whether you're multiplied by that inverse on the left, whether you're multiplied by that inverse on the right, you get the identity matrix. This fact is completely unexpected, and it is also very important. It spares us from considering a left inverse and a different right inverse. There is a single inverse. Every matrix that has an inverse has a well-defined inverse. And whether you multiply it by it on the left or on the right, the result in both cases is the identity matrix. That makes matrix algebra much simpler than it would have been had this not been the case. And it is the main takeaway from this video that every matrix that has an inverse has a single well-defined inverse. So that's the main takeaway, but I would like to focus a little bit more on the miraculous nature of this fact. Now both the first miracle and this one have simple explanations. The first one can be easily explained by the row reduced echelon form of the matrix. This one, this fact, also has a simple explanation, and I'll present it in a separate video. But for now, let's just talk about how surprising and unexpected it is. Now, here's why it's surprising. It's surprising because we know that matrix multiplication is non-commutative, that generally multiplying two matrices in, in this order and then in the opposite order leads to different results. Now, here we have two matrices and we're multiplying them in one order first and then in the opposite order and we're getting the same result. So it's surprising. Now we've already seen one exception to this, to the non-commutativity rule, and that's when one of these matrices is the identity. It doesn't matter whether you multiply it by the identity on the right or on the left, the result is always the other matrix. But with the identity, we can see rather easily why that holds. With numbers like this, it's completely unexpected, quite surprising, and the more you deal with the numbers, the more miraculous it seems. Because when you try to do the multiplication, you realize that these numbers here versus here interact in completely different ways. Let's take a quick look at a couple entries. Let's consider this zero. And let's take the dot product perspective on matrix multiplication. This entry is the dot product of this column and this row. So negative two thirds times one plus 11 thirds times four minus two times seven equals zero. That's where this zero comes from. Now let's look at this zero and this matrix. This zero and this matrix comes from negative four thirds times four plus 11 thirds times five minus two times six. So it's completely different sets of numbers coming together. And despite that all of the combinations are completely different, the result in all nine cases will be exactly the same. So I really want you to embrace the miracle that it appears to be. And there isn't a simple explanation based on the mechanics of matrix multiplication. To justify this in a relatively short way, you have to take a step back and argue from, from a more bird's eye view on matrix multiplication. And that's what we'll do in another video where we explain why this holds. And in that video, we won't be talking much about the mechanics of matrix multiplication. This holds for a much more profound reason. So in summary, AB typically does not equal BA. Commutativity does not hold for matrix multiplication. However, when that product equals identity, which means that the two matrices are the inverses of each other, equality does hold. So matrix multiplication is non-commutative, but there are two very fortunate and notable exceptions. One is when one of the matrices is the identity, and the other is when the matrices are the inverses of each other.